Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my YouTube channel The School of Love. My name is Maria and I am helping people discover their inner potential for love towards oneself and towards the others. Today I am going to explain 10 guidelines of how to be a leader in everyday situations. I'll um, outline 10 guidelines which I think are fundamental or crucial in our everyday confrontations and situations we encounter with others. So let's get started. Number one is listen. People smarter than me have already observed that today's world has a problem with listening. Everybody wants to talk. Everybody wants to be listened to. But it seems that nobody or very few people are willing to listen. And by listening is not only meant to um, be there and lend them your ear or your sensory, sensorial perception, it is really about being there in the present, in the moment, and thinking with that person, feeling with them, which brings me to number two, which is empathize. There are two types of empathy. Emotional empathy and cognitive empathy. So empathy essentially means to be able to put oneself into someone else's shoes and see things, feel things from their perspective. Empathy can have it happen with someone close to us, with a real person close to us, or with persons far away, for instance, when we watch the news, or when we watch a movie, or when we go to a theater. We can also feel empathy for someone who doesn't even exist, for a fictional character, for instance, when we read a book, or when we read a poem. Imagine you read or remember when you read a love poem, you can feel all those emotions, even if the poem wasn't written by you and it wasn't dedicated to you, but you can still feel those emotions. Now, there are two categories of empathy, cognitive empathy and emotional empathy. Persons high in narcissism or narcissistic traits know very well how to create or how to use cognitive empathy. Cognitive empathy refers to this intellectual knowing, so cognitive knowing of what a person might feel and accordingly under specific circumstances creating specific emotional reactions manipulation for instance so. and then we have emotional empathy which means feeling what the other person is feeling in which case it is very important to have healthy, strong, solid boundaries so that we do not get dragged by those emotions and so that we can understand, realize that where our emotions are in place and where someone else's emotions come and um, come towards us. Empathy can be taught, can be disciplined, can be learned and it's a very, very useful skill. Number three, which is um, borrowed from um, Stephen Covey, do your best to understand the others rather than to be understood. This is again, one of those things which the world lacks. People who want to understand who are willing to understand and who do not necessarily want to bring across their point. 
is absolutely um, if you come to think of it one thing to understand someone else is allowing that person to show their vulnerability to expose their authenticity and to trust you that you will not judge but just be there and listening and understanding and um, be a decent fellow human being. Number four. This is a bit shallow, but nevertheless, it has its own value. Dress neatly, elegantly, comfortably. I explain in another video what exactly it is neatly, elegantly, comfortably means. It essentially means try to create your own style and which is not intimidating to others but it is also flattering to you and uh, then people judge you by your looks based on your looks anyway at least until they start to know you better so it is important to make a good first impression and then to um, nurture and cherish that first impression. Number five. If you want to be understood, talk in a way which, help, which helps others understand you. It is often said in communication strategies that it does not really matter what you say, it matters what the others understand. And I believe it is true. I believe it is important to keep this in mind that it doesn't really matter what we say. If the others do not understand us, do not perceive us, do not get us, so to say, maybe there's a flaw in our communication style. It ties up also with number three, where we try to understand the others rather than make ourselves understood and bringing across our point. So, the same way, if you want to be understood, talk in a way which helps the others understand you properly. Number six is a tough one. Be honest, but do your best to be kind or at least polite. So what do you do when, let's say as a man, your spouse or your partner or your friend, female friend asks you, how do I look in this dress? And let's say he, she looks hideous, horrible, terrible. So you have two choices, tell her the truth and probably make her feel very bad. Even if she, you have a very good relationship, she will feel bad because she didn't realize her herself how bad she looks in that dress. The second choice is tell her you look terrific, by all means. Anything looks terrific on you, so why not this one too? Which brings the risk that she will walk looking ridiculous, dressed in a dress which doesn't fit her. So, which alternative is better? I, was, I would always say number one, because honesty pays off eventually. But, there's a caveat, be kind in your honesty or at least polite bring the truth in a comestible manner also don't hurt people more than necessary and even if you have to hurt them then do it in a way which doesn't put salt on the wound there are people having really real fun in putting other people down just don't. 
number seven. Smile sincerely. That is, with your mouth and with your eyes. Now that everybody is still wearing masks over here, particularly, I've never known when people are smiling. So I, I got used, I practiced in the mirror, I must confess, to smile with my eyes mainly. So, because nobody sees my smile under my mask, with my laughter under my mask, though they can hear it if I make it obvious. But when they see, they see my eyes. So I practice to smile with my eyes. And in breathing, this brings across a lot of warmth. So smile with your eyes as, as deeply as you can and as openly as you can. Most people know by now that you also cannot fake a smile with your eyes. Number eight, look the others in the eyes. Many people don't do this here over here in Japan. And I find it a huge loss. It's not no critique, it is just the culture and the education and the social economic background. Um, so I'm not judging it. I'm just missing it from from Europe, from Romania, from Germany. I miss it. And uh, I, I when, because I miss it probably it seems so important. So look the others in the eyes with honesty, with joy, with gratitude. I tell you, the other person will feel just amazing and, and also will return the favor. Number nine, keep your body posture straight. Stay straight. This encourages other people to stay straight as well, which then delivers this expansive impression of happy, fulfilled grown-ups or humans. Maybe it's because the older I get, the more I, I observe the people around me. But so many people walk in the street looking down. I won't say like the, like the movie, don't look up. I won't say that. But it's so good to look upwards or sideways and just enjoy the landscape. Even if that landscape is an empty wall, it's still good. And last but not least, number 10, know what you want as clearly as you can and improve yourself constantly. Because this will come across both as self-confidence and self-assurance and self-sufficiency. And what I mean by self-sufficiency is not necessarily this idea of not needing anyone and being you know, somehow mentally, emotionally isolated. But what I mean is rather um, to give the others the impression that they can count on you. And the better you know what you want and what you can, the more you can convey this impression of someone who is secure in himself or herself. And this, in its turn, brings the best in the others, regardless of whether they know it or not, and regardless of whether they want it or not. It is just part of interhuman communication, nonverbal communication. And that would be it for today. Thank you for being here with me today. And I'm looking forward to welcoming you back again very soon. Love and peace to you all.